This Bible question is an excerpt from our television program, What Do the Scriptures Say? We hope that it will enrich your spiritual life, and we hope that you'll come back to www.scripturesay.com to find answers to your Bible questions. Thank you. Now, this question, what is the significance in the torn veil in the temple at the death of Christ on, on the cross, came as a result of a phone call. I, I did what you, you do occasionally, Danny. I, I was answering the phones uh, a few Sundays back, and mm -hmm. uh, this phone call came in, and we had a really interesting discussion. Matthew 27, verse 50 through 51 is where the reference is. Let's read it together. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. That's, that's what happened at the death of Christ. In the temple, the veil ripped in two. Now, what I want you to do is try to visualize this in your picture. At the time that Jesus died, it was... Uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon or, or so it was about the time of the evening sacrifice and the Levitical priests and the priests would have been involved in preparing the temple for services there would be a number of the priests in the temple they would be preparing the incense and they would be pre preparing the lamps and we're talking about Several dozen priests, literally, they're all in the temple as Jesus, did you notice, yielded up his spirit. I love the way that Matthew says that. He didn't die. He didn't die. He gave his spirit to God. He yielded up his spirit. And when death occurred to his body, that veil was ripped in two. Now visualize this. You've got dozens, likely several dozen priests in a temple. We know from Exodus 26 and verse 31 and following that the veil in the temple uh, was made of finely twisted linen. I'm thinking of the most finely twisted linen that I know of is a Navajo rug, something along those lines, very very tight weave, extremely strong. And Exodus describes this, uh, this uh, curtain, this veil, as being very thick, and it was 40 cubits in length. What's a cubit, Danny? I don't know. I've oh, forgotten. you remember? I've forgotten. From the tip of your elbow to the tip of your index finger, and uh, uh, my cubit... Um, is about oh. two feet. <laughs> yeah, it depended upon who the leader was. That that's one cubit. So uh, my my veil temple would be uh, what eighty feet in length. Can you picture that? Eighty feet. We're we're not talking about a little sliver of linen, and we're talking about finely woven linen. You're in the temple. You're serving according to your tradition, and all of a sudden you hear this. From the top to the bottom, what do you think is going on in the mind of those priests when that happens? Well, and the scriptures also tell us that there's an earthquake, there's dark. Of course, they may not have known it was dark outside, being inside, but, yeah. but things start to rattle and shake. And, and Can you, Are you sensing what's happening here? In Acts chapter 6 and verse 7, the scripture records that a great number of priests were be, being obedient to the faith. Why do you think that happened? <laughs> Why? I'll tell you why. Because the temple was rent. Every priest who was present got the symbolism in that message instantly. They had to get it. It was ripped from top to bottom. God is changing everything. No longer is, is access going to go through a priest to God. There is no temple or veil separating you between God any longer. And I'm, I'm going to go through several significant biblical concepts with regard to the meaning of the veil and its rendering. First of all, I'd like to talk about the colors a little bit of that. 
of that curtain or that veil. It was comprised of three colors, blue, purple, and scarlet. Some have suggested the blue emphasized the, uh, the, the nature of Christ, standing for his uh, human nature, the scarlet for his earthly nature, the, the purple for his priestly nature. Secondly, the rendering, uh, the rending of the of the veil, demonstrated that the high priest, as the representative of the people, who entered into the holy of holies, was no longer their representative. Today, every Christian has access to God, not through a veil, not through some priest, but by stepping into God's presence personally in prayer. Hebrews ten and verse nineteen. Thirdly, the, the rending of the veil indicated that Christ's body was also rent for the remission of our sins, for the sins of the whole world. The Holy of Holies was the place where satisfactory sacrifice was offered, where atonement was made, where the mercy seat, the propitiation was. And the high priest entered there to, to receive forgiveness. Now that forgiveness is available to all mankind. Fourthly, it, it indicates that the removal of those hindrances between God and the worshiper has, has uh, occurred and never again is there a hindrance. Christ's followers have freedom to enter God openly and freely. Ephesians 2 verses 18 and 3 verse 12. Fifthly, the rent veil means that the Old Testament can now be understood in light of the New Testament. Without Christ, the Old Testament is insignificant. It's meaningless. It may contain some interesting history, but without Christ, you can't understand the Old Testament. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 14 and following. The veil is lifted when you understand Jesus. The veil of 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 the inability to understand the significance of the Old Testament. Sixthly, the rending meant that Christ had conquered death. Death is no longer the enemy of the Christian. Christ has been raised from the dead. It was impossible for him to be held in its power, Peter said in Acts chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says that's the last enemy of the Christian that, that will be overcome when he returns at the end of time, at the second coming. And seventh, the rent veil abo abolished the office of the earthly priests. All of the functions that were held in reserve for the priest are now given to every follower of Christ. Look at this verse in Hebrews 9 and verse 11. But when Christ appeared as high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with, with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, nor through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. We have a new high priest. It's not a man who lives on earth. It's Jesus Christ who lives in heaven. He entered that tabernacle for us through his own sacrifice, through his own blood, and now he becomes the mediator between God and man. No man on earth has the right to be the mediator since we now have Christ in heaven, our man in heaven. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 5 through 6, for there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for us, the testimony given at the proper time. Once for all time, God has removed all of the barriers between you and his presence. If you are in the right relationship to him, you are a priest. Look at first. Peter 2 and verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, 
so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Revelation 5 and verse 10, one more verse says, you, made, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon earth. What John is talking about is the church. Every Christian is a priest. Don't believe those who say that you have to go through a man to have access to God. If you are in the right relationship to God, if you believe in Christ, if you repent of your sins, if you confess Christ, and if you're baptized for the remission of your sins, the Scripture tells us that you're added to the church and you are part of that kingdom, the church, priests who serve God. The veil is so significant. It, it demonstrated an audio-visual illustration, and uh, I have no doubt in my mind that many of those priests that Acts records as being obedient were standing in the temple on that day, and they saw it, and they knew what it meant. The Old Testament system is gone. The New Covenant ushered in by the blood of Christ is here. We'll look at another one of your questions in just a minute. Thank you. We thank you for your interest in what do the scriptures say. We hope that you will come back to scripturesay.com often for answers to your Bible questions. See you then.